Welcome to the presentation of the results of the German Debt Project 2024. We are presenting today the results of the commercial real estate debt market in Germany uh, that we are analyzed with the help of a survey of the leading commercial real estate lending institutions, IE banks. The OSWI and Simon Wiersma, who has been analyzing with me together the, the market, and myself, Tobias Hust, I'm the academic director of the Eric's Real Estate Academy. Thanks to our uh, sponsors, to Wolving Giza, Craftsy Europe, Inreal, MSCI, and the TIA. Thanks also to a kind support with data and intellectual uh, input from BDP, Verband, Deutscher Pfandbriefband. The methodology has been unchanged for the last 10 years, so we are analyzing data that is directly prepared by the banks and is feeding into a portfolio analysis, and we are leading approximately 20 interviews with the capital market analysts, all with the board members, all with the uh, um, department heads for commercial real estate lending. So it's a mix of quantitative and qualitative analysis that I'm going to be presenting. The next slide you will see the participating banks. So all of them have been interviewed. Uh, only the banks on the left have also prepared data that we can analyze in our uh, surveys. Before we start, maybe the uh, main results. The macroeconomics uh, in Germany is still weak. Uh, we expect a recession to be happening in 2024. So we are not yet in the growth momentum. Only for next year, low growth might be expected. The real estate finance market is mirroring that, but in uh, different ways than in the past. The real estate markets are hit hard by the increased interest rates over the last years, and now the uh, lower interest rates are a little help, but it is not yet back to growth. But what we see is a growing differentiation in the markets. So the banks are active, but not everywhere. They are active, for example, in residential, in logistics, they are less active in office. But differentiation goes further. They are active in some office segments, they are active in some retail segments, and they are active in some logistics segments. So the differentiation is not only by asset classes, it's also within the asset classes, it is within the regions, and it is who gets how much of the capital. Third back, uh, we are going into different burdens. So we have significantly burdened segments. That is not the usual suspect of corona pandemics. It's not only the retail and the hotel industry, but increasingly also some segments within the office market. <laughs> the banks are still remaining careful. They are uh, uh, regulated tightly and need to be careful by uh, who to give the money. What is seen throughout the survey, uh, the sustainability question has been uh, shifted towards uh, the top uh, board and uh, management decision-making process within the um, finance. That means all three aspects, environmental, social, and government aspects are covered today in financial uh, 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 aspect, but environmental aspects are by far leading. So let's go into the separate aspects uh, in more detail. First, competition is back. So we are asking the banks, how do you see competi uh, competition uh, in this half, half year compared to the half year before? So everything that is read here means in these uh, periods, the banks have been reported that competition has become fiercer. So uh, throughout the years until the corona pandemic, competition has increased. Pandemics has led to a lower competition because banks have been very careful at the beginning, but you see it has been only lasting uh, literally two quarters. After that, competition was back until the ECB increased uh, interest rate, and then there was a shock momentum and competition eased significantly. Banks have been very reluctant uh, directly after the interest rate hikes. But at the very current end in 2024, it seems that competition is back, but not everywhere. Banks report that there are some segments where competition is increasingly fierce, almost back to the pre-interest rate level. And that is the pockets that we could call core plus care uh, super poor. So all that 
uh, where location is important, or there where uh, the uh, offices or the retail space is fully led, or where we have a long contract, but uh, the banks are reporting that the environmental aspect increasingly also play a role. In other segments, competition is still weak. So this is part of this differentiation that we are mentioning. What is the overall market? The overall market has been declining in 2023 by a significant double-digit amount. So the overall new business of the banks has been declining by more than 30%. And this is a second year in a row that market uh, business has been decreasing. The overall loan book has been shrinking only uh, weekly, and this is simply due to prolongation that is, of course, playing a major role for all those who are uh, doing developments, investments, and the banks also have an interest to do the prolongations. So until now, the loan book is not uh, decreasing rapidly, only weekly, but the new business has been declining sharply. As I mentioned before, we see a significant ongoing differentiation between the asset classes. So the banks are very happy to finance residential, a little less happy to finance logistics than in the previous years. That means banks are looking more carefully. Some have been talking about a logistics hype, and they are looking at it more carefully. Some have been raising the point that we have to look at e-commerce logistics and industrialization uh, logistics, that means for manufacturing products, uh, differently. So, of course, everything that is uh, dealing with manufacturing is hit hard by the weaker economy. Everything that is dealing with e-commerce logistics is still benefiting from a structural change towards, towards more uh, e-commerce. But we also see that hotel is somewhat back. So after the pandemic, banks were very reluctant with financing hotel, and mainly uh, only doing a few deals and actually partly also family hotels and uh, holiday hotels. But now the focus is clearly that they're going back, they would like to do more in hotel, and that they're focusing again a little bit more on business hotels. With regards to office, uh, only few transactions are to be seen, and this is primarily the core location, the best locations, new offices, uh, very efficient, and also sustainable offices. Maybe to some surprise, uh, uh, not only supermarkets and big box retailing has been financed, but some banks are moving slowly back to the hard-hit other retail segments. That is, for example, shopping centers. But of course, after they were repriced significantly, and they are doing it very carefully and they are very prudently. This focus, as I mentioned, uh, is going deeper. Uh, when they are looking at offices, they are only looking at central offices. They are not looking at peripheral offices. When they are looking at retail, they are not looking at any retail, but only these venture segments. So this differentiation between the different asset classes is aggravated by differentiation within the asset classes. What is more, uh, banks have been very active uh, managing their portfolio. What you see here is that they're, uh, the, the term structure of their different uh, loans. What we currently see is that there is a, uh, a peak at the very short end and the peak at the very long end. And then it's mirroring this activity. So some loans have been pushed to a very long termination end, and some loans have been dealt with only a very short term. So, but many investors, and particularly developers, had to fight, what am I doing to do with my uh, to, uh, credit, with my debt? So, and they are uh, asking for prolongation. Uh, most of the developers are asking for short-term prolongation because they hope they finish their project, they hope that they will then be able to sell it, so this is the sharp uh, increase at the short-term end, but some investors, some long-term investors would rather have to have a better planning and therefore they shift to the long end. So therefore this V that we currently uh, see is more pronounced than in the previous years. But we also see that uh, the internationalization as it hasn't been as strong as uh, before the great financial crisis, uh, there is no um, echo effect as strong as after the great financial crisis. That means 
uh, banks keep this strategy uh, before uh, the, the, the interest rate hike and they can keep to it after the interest rate hike. Within this set of countries, it was remarkable that very often countries were highlighting not only the usual sub suspects like uh, US, UK, and France, but we heard more often than in the past Italy and Poland. And particularly in Italy was a little bit surprising because that was hardly mentioned in the past. But some banks uh, argued there is a very liquid market, a very professional institutional market, particularly for the north of Italy. Uh, therefore, they are happy to move in because they are uh, expecting more stable and high notes. So uh, this demand of the project developers to prolongate their um, uh, financing is also here in this picture. This picture shows that uh, the uh, extra uh, uh, prolongation uh, uh, annuity has been, the repayment has been uh, shifted strongly to the past. So we don't see many repayments that are uh, not uh, in, the, in the contract. So that is mirroring that many project developers are currently, currently fighting uh, to get their projects A done and B sold. So uh, the possibility to repay early is currently not on the cards. So therefore, uh, they need uh, the prolongation. And this is exactly here. We have the lowest level of extra repayments uh, ever. Uh, and this is the uh, result that the uh, overall balance sheet of the bank still is comparatively strong. The business, when we compare the classical commercial real estate with the institutional residential real estate, residential, as I mentioned before, is uh, the main uh, choice for many of the banks. So new business is to a larger share than almost ever our new institutional residential transactions. Commercial uh, has been done uh, stronger for, with regards to logistics and uh, less to uh, retail. With regards to the regional split, we see that uh, also here we see a differentiation. Berlin is staying strong in relative terms of, because of course every single city is facing this decline in business, but within the city uh, portfolios, Berlin is standing stronger than, for example, Hamburg or New York. Uh, Frankfurt, which has been one of the uh, most active markets with regards to uh, office, has been actually sharply uh, declining, and that is uh, actually mirroring uh, the decline in office transactions. Because of, uh, Frankfurt is the city with traditionally the biggest share of office deals, and therefore if office markets are currently discussed, so this is of course hitting Frankfurt harder than Berlin, Munich, or Hamburg. You also see that the so-called Big Seven is actually maybe a Big Three or a Big Four at best. The other three markets, Düsseldorf, Stuttgart, and Cologne, have been uh, significantly lower. Developments, well, surprise, surprise, if we have rising interest rates, developments are continuing their way down. So we see fewer developments being financed. And of course, this is still 2023. Banks were telling us that to a 2024, this will continue downwards. All this macro environment will feed into more prudence on part of the, of the balance. So that means their loan to values are continuing sliding down. More for commercial and a little similar for residential, but not as loud as for commercial. So the banks are uh, trying to um, capture the uh, price in, uh, uh, slowdown, the price declines by giving uh, lower shares of the declining prices in loan to values. The uh, overall uh, development is not only a question of that uh, the average goes down, but at the same time, the, the spread between uh, the shares what the banks do has been coming down and compared to previous years. So that means the banks are playing the same prudent card, namely they are financing comparatively limited. So the most active investors that could be uh, the long-term, for example, family offices that are still uh, remaining, and they typically have a higher share of equity anyway. There are significant implications uh, because um, we pointed out in previous years that the sharply rising prices imply that if the prices come down, loan values will sharply increase. 
So therefore, we forecast no risk already in the uh, previous years. The banks will need to step on the brakes once prices have come down, because otherwise the prices will go through the roof. This is seen in here in this picture. It's only a model that is not a forecast, but we wanted to, to highlight that if prices come down, LTVs go up. So if prices go down to a significant uh, level, LTVs will uh, increase to a significant level. That's is the result why the banks are uh, so careful because they know about that. They know that prices have come down in residential and commercial and therefore in, keep, in order to keep their uh, overall leveraging intact, they need to be careful with at least the new yields. So that, of course, causes a, a main issue, namely uh, put this gap between uh, the financing needs and what banks are willing to provide be uh, fully filled uh, with mezzanine uh, financing. Well, here it seems that banks are having opposing views. Some think uh, that mezzanine has to play a bigger role, and uh, some say mezzanine cannot play this role uh, for various reasons. So this chart needs to be seen uh, looking at health in two different perspectives. So the one line of argument goes, should mezzanine play a bigger role, or Will it have to play a bigger role? And then banks say, well, likely. Uh, will they need to fill gaps within separate deals? Well, likely. But on the other hand, banks also say they, they uh, learn about mezzanine finances that have similar issues like the banks themselves. So they have to be careful. So therefore, they say uh, maybe they would like to have these uh, players on the market, but they currently cannot. So this leads to these opposing views looking at half the, about the role of mezzanine financing. So let's have a look at the margins. If uh, competition has eased uh, in the last years and now starting to go back, do we find that also in the margins? Yes, we see that in the margins that there's a little more room for margins to move up, uh, at least for the total gross margin. Net margin is, of course, mirroring also the financing cost for the bank, but for the gross margin, that has been going up. So the banks have been, uh, in the total portfolio, been able to uh, increase the margin given looking ahead. And this holds for both commercial and residential real estate alike. What comes on top is the uh, development fees for the project developers. Here we don't see much of movement, well, but here we have to be careful with few transactions and very few developments. Uh, the data behind this is a little bit smaller than in the past. So therefore, uh, the, the fee uh, indication is uh, pointing towards, well, limited fees, but keep in mind that uh, uh, the data behind that is not as big as we would like to have because there are fewer transactions and developments. So the current situation is also the result of data regulation. ECB, Buffett, and Bundesbank have been um, very fiercely fighting uh, a, a similar scenario like the financial crisis by tightly regulating, tightly looking at the data. All banks report that they are hardly analyzed, uh, that they are hard analyzed, so that they are uh, looked into the data. Some report that they are even forced to make a revaluation. Sometimes uh, the regulator even sends their own valuer. So the result that banks so far have come through the uh, crisis comparatively well is also the result of better and tighter regulation. However, every type of regulation can go too far. And this is also what banks report. So they currently report, we are very happy that they were having a good regulation in the past, and that this helped to reach the current situation. But they also report that at the very uh, uh, end of the uh, development, uh, regulation is stretching too much. For example, when they look at office, it seems that one size fits all. They are not making the uh, differentiation between office or office plus. They don't, so the regulator office seems to be office, same for retail. So here, the banks report that they would like to have a significant amount of more um, leeway to differentiate. What all banks also report is the role of ESG. Namely, that all regulators look into uh, sustainability issues. Namely, um, do they have a uh, environmental uh, scoring or an environmental issue when they give up that? Do they have a social or a governance question in their questionnaire when they're starting a financial uh, transaction? 
what is very important. ESG is currently primarily E. Well, G, most banks have to report anyway, but E compared to S is significantly more E. Literally all banks have something in place. Literally all banks have the target to have more environmentally friendly project development. Nearly all banks report that they would manage to green uh, uh, and ha help financing that. So on the environmental side, most banks report that they are making very good progress and that they also feel happy with what the regulator helps them with. On the social end, there were um, most banks that say we would like to do more, but we don't know exactly what to do. So they are looking into that, that and uh, then ending up with some affordability questions with some financing affordability uh, property. Uh, but uh, they also say uh, they're not feeling very easy because they would like to have a clear uh, uh, taxonomy that helps them uh, guide. Some banks are uh, further ahead in social aspects, so they are starting to initiate social bonds. Uh, but others uh, still say, oh, we are very careful and wait till there is more in place. But again, with environmental, they feel uh, pretty ahead. So uh, where do, uh, is that in place? Well, um, banks are trying to increase, particularly in office. They are trying to increase, particularly in logistics, to a lesser extent in hotel, retail, and residential. Is it already paying a better price? Well, not really. So most banks report that the margin difference between a green financing and a non-green financing is not more than uh, zero to five base points. Some say it is more, they use it as a tactical instrument, but this is a sharp minority. Some banks even report there is no difference at all. And this is actually quite in line with what we found out in a recent study by IRIS, namely that commercial lending as only a very small spread if it's great compared to non-green. But many banks report that they can expect that this might be growing if the ECB is looking even closer to environmental friendly financing. For example, if capital requirements would ease. And this brings us to uh, the list of what banks currently report what they have to present. So they are complaining about many issues. The list is presented here, not going into all points. But of course, Basel III, the completing of Basel III, or Basel IV, as it's sometimes coined, is the main issue. The second issue that is comparatively new is the property value. Uh, so they are forced to value properties according to this new property value, with it, which is but a little similar like the idea behind the Belayungswert in Germany. Namely, that there is a um, lower value compared to market values to be prudent and to try to uh, match the long-term value of the property. So here banks have been uh, aware that this is going to be relevant in the future, but they are still needing some guidance. How exactly should that be appraised and how that should be compared, for example, with the uh, reliable Let's come to the last point, namely looking uh, to the future, what is maybe the overall framework for the financial markets. So overall, we can say uh, the development market, the macroeconomics uh, of the overall construction is muted. So you see a sharp decline of construction activity. That was a result of the sharply rising interest rate, but it was also the result of sharply rising construction prices. And these sharply rising construction prices were, of course, a mix of supply-side shocks that occurred over the last two years. The good news is at least these supply-side shock, uh, shocks have been managed. The inflation also in the construction industry has come down, not only because the supply side has better, but also because demand is going down. So the good news is uh, price pressure has been easing over the past couple of months, and most banks report that they expect this to continue. So inflationary pressure, therefore, is expected to go down, and this is exactly what we find in the data. The latest reported inflation data have been uh, a meager 2%, and 
Inflation expectation, which is computed by the Bundesbank, are still standing at 3%, but have been happening over the last uh, months too. So in the end, there's more room for lower interest rates. And this is also what the banks report. But you see that the gap, what the banks uh, expect as potential for lower interest rate, is significant. So they see um, a little bit uh, further de uh, well, decrease of interest rate in the short term, a little more in the medium term until they have a new uh, level. Uh, but all banks report they don't expect interest rates to reach the zero that we had before uh, the interest rate hikes. So what is happening uh, looking ahead? Well, the uh, fixed rates uh, are dominating the market, so most investors, developers would like to have rather fixed rates. That is typical after such a development because nobody is really uh, uh, able to know the future, so uh, everybody tries to be uh, careful. Maybe in the course of the next uh, couple of months, when interest rates are going down further, maybe we see again a, a switch towards more uh, volatile, more flexible uh, rates, but so far we don't see it. Now we have to come to the result of that all, namely, uh, has NPL volumes going up? Yes, they have. They have been going up actually in 2023 already significantly. Uh, the ratings have been going down and the NPLs are going up. Uh, low, um, low loss provisions have also been going up. The uh, good news is uh, we have not yet reached neither in commercial nor residential the levels that we have, have had after the great financial crisis. But maybe we are not yet there. So maybe that is only an interim spot. So of course the uh, current numbers uh, need to be deflated, but the effect uh, is not as big as it might be. We are still standing short of the very high levels of 2010 and 2011, uh, but we are significantly above the very low levels of 2020-2021. So in that sense, the recessionary environment is mirrored, of course, also on the balance sheet. Therefore, it's good that the regulation has been so fierce so that the banks have been regulated tightly and uh, they have managed to early address the issue at stake and that they are very well capitalized so they are e easier managing this issue than in the past. So we always conclude with what do the banks see as opportunities and risk. This is comparatively boring this time uh, because of course the risks are still on, on hand, namely macroeconomic and geopolitical risk. Of course banks by reflex also say that regulation is a risk and some banks even report that environmental regulation is still a risk. None of these is surprising. On the Opportunity side, it was maybe uh, the, the topic of this year that the banks are happy if the economic and geopolitical risks are not materializing. So the upside for them is that we have some upswing, that we have a little peace. And then with uh, only a, a big gap, they mentioned environmental, namely manage to green or even digitization as maybe a, uh, an opportunity. Why digitization in the past? Banks were particularly uh, eager to say we have a, a startup or Proptex or whatever. This year, they saw the opportunities in digitization primarily on the asset, namely on data centers. So when they talked about digitization, it's primarily can we finance more data centers uh, or uh, properties that are uh, data efficient. Uh, becoming uh, more efficient than sales was maybe the topic of the last years, but it was not mentioned very often this time. Thanks a lot. So here again, the contact details. If you want to reach out for getting the whole report, you can go to uh, our homepage, irips.academy. Here you see the contact details of me and my colleagues. You want their stuff. Thanks a lot.